For several years, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus was my main mic for video productions, plus other things like voiceovers and even some of my early podcast episodes. But a new mic recently rode into my life that made me say, NTG whiz, this thing is real, it's really great, it's a good microphone. Pretty much any time you see an angle like this from me where the microphone is not in the frame, I am using a video mic. And like I just said, for quite a long time, that was the Video Mic Pro Plus, which is an outstanding video microphone that costs about $300. And while this video is not sponsored, about six months ago, Rode did send me the Video Mic NTG for free just because they were being nice. They didn't ask me to make a video about it. They didn't pay me for it. And it worked out great because up until then, my wife Heather and I were sharing this microphone when we made our videos. So now she uses this microphone in her office and I use the NTG. So today I wanna to cover some of the basic features about the NTG. I definitely wanna do some comparisons with the Pro Plus. And I also wanna explain why I prefer and recommend the NTG over the Plus, even though I think technically the Plus is the higher end model. So let's start with some of the basics. And if you know me and the way I review and compare things, I don't usually spend too much time on these super technical specifications because there are plenty of people who do that better than me. And what I'm more interested in is how these things function in your actual real world use case scenarios. So the VideoMic NTG not only delivers great sound quality, but it also has a few killer features. And the mic itself is sort of a hybrid because Rode for many years has had video mics and for many years, they've also produced XLR NTG shotgun microphones. And the VideoMic NTG is a hybrid of the VideoMic with the NTG. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds, and especially for anybody that's on a budget. While $250 isn't the cheapest microphone you can get, I think it's just about the best value you can get, especially if you need to use it for more than one purpose. So let's put the NTG in the shot just so you can see what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. And first and foremost, the design of the microphone. The biggest difference comes with the build quality. The Pro Plus is all plastic, and if I take the windscreen off of it, the actual microphone element itself is a long plastic tube within the I don't know, the capsule at the end of it. The VideoMic NTG is all metal, it's all aluminum. It feels like a regular shotgun microphone and in fact you can just snap it out of the shock mount and then position it or use it in other places if you want to. It has a 3.5 millimeter output. Right next to the power button there are three little LED lights. One has a negative 20, one has volume bars, and one has a symbol that represents audio clipping, levels that are too loud and they're getting clipped off. And what this lets you do is fine tune and adjust and protect yourself and your audio while you're recording. If you press the power button once, it's gonna turn on the negative 20 decibel pad, which means it's going to lower the output of the microphone. So if you're in a really loud environment and no matter what you do, your sound is clipping and it's too loud, you can turn that on, it's gonna push everything down. The VideoMic Pro Plus has a similar feature. You can press a decibel button on the back and you can go down to negative 10. If you press the power button twice on the NTG, then you turn on the safety channel, which means one channel of the output is gonna be just whatever levels you have it set as, but the other channel is going to be 20 decibels lower and it's gonna do both at the same time. And that is good because if you're filming something and the audio clips and it, it's too loud, you have like a backup safety track that you can then replace that with because it's gonna be recorded lower. Since you are boosting that up in post, it probably means it's gonna be a little noisier and not gonna be quite as high quality, but it's, it's almost like, almost like recording with two microphones at the same time. You have your main mic and then you have a safety track. And that's a very cool feature. And the LED that's under the clipping symbol is basically a peaking meter. When it starts flashing, that means your signal is too loud and you know you need to adjust something. And that's cool feedback that other Rode microphones, other video mics in the past just haven't had. And the EQ button on the video mic NTG is where it starts to share a lot of features with the Pro Plus. Basically, you've got your high pass filters. You can press it once to engage a high pass filter that's at 75 hertz. You can press it again to engage a high pass filter that's at 150 hertz. And you can press and hold it to actually do a high boost or high signal boost. And I should have mentioned too earlier that the Pro Plus also does have the safety channel. So you have that option on both microphones as well. Now some places where the Plus 
outdoes the NTG really has to do with battery life. The Plus has a battery door, which is so much easier than the old video mics used to be, and it has a removable, rechargeable battery. And you can also put in AA batteries right in here, which is great because that that's safety, right? You have the safety channel, but you also have safety power, so you'll pretty much never run out of battery power, and you battery believe that that's a powerful feature. And actually, I mean, if you think about it, charging this doesn't take very long. The battery itself lasts a really long time. It lasts like 100 hours is what it's rated for. You could, in theory, have a few of these batteries, so that way if you're doing a long shoot day or you're doing a lot of traveling, you don't even need to charge it. You're gonna have more than enough power. But the fact you can also just put in some double A's right into here means that even if everything's dead, you can just, I don't know, stop at a gas station, get some batteries, and you'll be up and running. How do I put this back in here? The VideoMic NTG does not have a removable battery. It has a built-in non-serviceable battery, so that's definitely a negative. Its battery also is only rated for 30 hours instead of 100 hours, so it's not nearly as long-lasting as the Pro Plus. I use the mic several hours a week, and I usually charge it about once a month. So it's not an issue. I mean, 30 hours is still a lot of hours. Both of these microphones have removable audio cables, which is great. Again, the older, older video mics had built-in cables, so if something happened to it, the whole microphone would need to be sent in for repair or wouldn't work anymore. This one, the Pro Plus, was also the first video mic that had an auto power on and off feature, which was amazing because the older ones, again, you had to remember to turn the mic on or turn the mic off. I would always forget to turn it off and then the battery would die and it'd be a nine volt battery. That was a total pain to change is a whole thing. Don't worry about it. I'm old. You don't need to worry about that. This microphone will turn on when the camera turns on and it will turn off when the camera turns off. Same with the video mic NTG. It will turn on with the camera, turn off with the camera, but there's a huge benefit to the NTG that like, that just makes me love it so much more. This mic has something that drives me crazy. When you charge it, you plug it in with a micro USB charger. There's a little blue light on the back of it. When the blue light stays constantly on, that means the microphone is charged, and then you unplug it. When you unplug the Pro Plus from the charger, it's just on. It doesn't turn off. So what I've done on more than one occasion is charge up the microphone, see it's fully charged, unplug it, put it in my camera bag, and then a day or two later or more, when I go to use it thinking I got this fully charged microphone, it's actually dead because it was just on the whole time and it ran out of battery. The VideoMic NTG, when you charge it with USB-C, you unplug it and the microphone turns off. So you take it off the charger and the microphone's off until you plug it into your camera or you turn it on manually. And while we're talking about charging, the VideoMic Pro Plus does use a micro USB charger like I mentioned, whereas the VideoMic NTG uses USB-C, and you will see why that is amazing, not just because it is a more common, more universal charging thingy, but because one of the killer features of the VideoMic NTG is that it can be used as a USB microphone. If you plug it in to your computer, it will show up just like a NT-USB, a Yeti, any other USB microphone you've used. Works great on conference calls. I do need to clarify that I haven't used it too much as a USB microphone personally because I have my Rodecaster and all my other mics and stuff, so when I'm on my computer, that's what I use. But if you're somebody who doesn't have all of that, you can get this microphone use it for all of your videos, and then plug it to your computer and use it for streaming, for voiceovers, podcasting, whatever. And the biggest, bestest, most greatestest, killer, featureist, in my opinion, of the VideoMic NTG is what Rode calls the infinitely variable gain control, which is just this dial on the back that lets you adjust the gain. Total game changer, or... <laughs> game changer, if you will. It makes things so much easier. I've done a few videos, if you saw like my sound treatment video or my Zoom teaching setup video, I filmed both of those with the NTG. And when I was filming those videos, for part of it, you know, I would be in front of the camera like normal and so the microphone was pointing at me and I was talking to it and I had the level set. But as I was kind of giving a tour of my setup, I just turned the microphone around so when I had the camera pointed away from me, the microphone was facing toward me, and I could just point and talk about what, what I was showing. 
but because it made me so much closer to the microphone, the level changed. And since this dial not only exists, but also has numbered markers on it, I quickly knew like, okay, when I'm in front of the microphone, I need it at 11 because it should go to 11. When I'm behind the camera, that means I should turn it to eight. And as the whole day, just quickly switching the microphone back and forth, I knew switch it forward, turn it to 11, switch it back, turn it to eight. And it kept the levels consistent and it sounded so good. If you watch those videos and it looks like there's a voiceover with B-roll clips, there is no actual voiceover. It is just me with the microphone pointed towards me on the camera, like talking as I'm filming. And the first camera, the main camera is my EOS R, which is actually in a small rig cage. It has a little monitor attached to it. All of those things are 100% unnecessary, but also very, very fun. So now let's do some comparisons. And before we even jump into that, I will tell you if you already have the Pro Plus, I don't think you should spend the money to get this unless you need any of those very specific features I mentioned. So this is the Pro Plus with the plus 20 boost on it, which is normally how I use it with my camera's gain turned almost all the way down. And this is with no boost, but raised a little bit in Final Cut Pro during the editing. So you can kind of hear the difference in quality. Both microphones are about the same distance away from me right now. But while we're talking into the Pro Plus, Maybe you can hear some of the difference in tone. I do think that this microphone is a little bit fuller. It seems like it's a little bit better at picking up, you know, rejecting sound while having directional sound. I can even test that out. So if I turn the microphone and you can kind of hear how my voice changes as it goes around and then comes back, you can sort of hear the rejection. Switching back to the NTG, uh, maybe you can hear a difference in quality. If I go to the side of the microphone, you can hear how it's rejecting. If I go behind the microphone, if I go back over here to the other side, you can sort of hear the pickup pattern. I'm gonna switch back to the Pro Plus so I can show you some features on the NTG. So when you get the microphone, it comes with a cable that's kind of flat, which is great because depending on where you're running it, you can run it through this mount and it has these little clips and you can just clip the cable right in there and then run it into your camera and it's got sort of a built-in cable management system. But a couple other big benefits. If you've used a video mic before and you put it on your camera, you might know that then if you go to use your viewfinder, it sometimes bumps you right in the head. If it's the microphone's too far and it's getting into the frame of your shot, you can move it backwards. If it's bumping you in the head, you can move it forward. So that way it's positioned exactly where you want it, depending on your camera and your mount, where it's not going to get in the way. Also, this mount that comes with it lets you do something else, which is really cool. And I am so sorry. Somebody gave me this idea in like the comments or a live stream. And I know it's somebody who I talk to a lot in the comments of my channel, but I don't remember who. So if you're the one that gave me this idea, I am taking it from you and I'm grateful to you and I'm sorry that I forgot that it came from you. But it involves the Rode Wireless Go. Because the hot shoe needs to slide back and forth to let you adjust it, there's like this rail in here. So if you have the NTG and you have the Wireless Go, you can actually slide the transmitter into the mount, connect it to the microphone, and now you have a wireless shotgun microphone. And then you could put this on a boom arm, you can put it you know, at the other end of a room or something. You can even get, you know, a little handle like this or a little tripod like that. And now you have a wireless handheld microphone, which is also your camera shotgun microphone, which is also a USB microphone. Here, let's go back to the NTG. Very quickly, I would like to point out that if you're wondering how I'm connecting these microphones to the little tripod here or this little handle, which is just a little recorder handle from Zoom, the microphones themselves have 3 8 inch mounts on the bottom. And so I'm using a little 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter so that they will fit on all of these things here. So at this point, I hope you can see why I'm so excited about the VideoMic NTG. Like I said, I really love the Pro Plus. In terms of battery and power, it does offer some edge over the NTG, but pretty much in every other way, including the fact that the NTG is smaller and more compact, at least a little bit, I have no idea why you would get the plus over the NTG. If you wanna know more about microphones and audio and getting good audio for your videos because audio is half a video, check out these videos right here.